Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Ethereum's approach to scaling. Now, Ethereum's approach to scaling is very, very unique. Ethereum has a roll-up centric roadmap and it's combined with data shards. In today's video, we're going to be discussing exactly what this means, going into detail about all of the technical aspects of Ethereum and talking about how it could essentially reach 15 million transactions per second in the long term. Now, before we start this video, I also want to credit the person who did most of the research for it. Now, the person that came up with a lot of this stuff is called Polinya, and you can find him on Twitter and Medium. He's a very good resource, and this video is essentially breaking down and summing up a lot of the research that he's made in the past. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, and remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. So let's get into it. Now, the article that I'm going to be referencing is called Why Rollups and Data Shards Are the Only Sustainable Solution for High Scalability. And I really do believe that this is the case. I believe that a lot of these other layer ones like Solana that are trying to scale everything on the base layer and Avalanche are not going to work in the long term. I really do believe that we need rollups on top of the layer ones in order to scale and Polinya agrees here. So let's briefly discuss what rollups and sharding actually is, and I'm going to keep this very short as there's a lot more information in the rest of the video. Essentially, what rollups are is they take some of the work of doing the computation off chain. Essentially, what will happen is a bunch of transactions will be computed off the Ethereum main chain by an independent set of sequences. Now, once all of these transactions have been computed, they will be bundled up and a proof that these transactions have happened will be submitted to the layer one. This means that all of these transactions will be submitted to the layer one in the form of a proof and as a direct result, the rollup will inherit Ethereum security and decentralization. However, it will be much more scalable. There already are a few real world examples of rollups such as Arbitrum, and optimism and these are called optimistic rollups. Now, essentially what sharding is, is it's splitting up the work of doing the verification of the chain. Now, if there are two different approaches to sharding. You can do execution sharding and data sharding. Essentially, what Ethereum is doing is Ethereum is doing data sharding. And what data sharding does is it means there's more space and more data availability for these rollups to post their proofs to the Ethereum main chain, and it speeds up the rollups even more. As a direct result, Ethereum's roadmap is a, ro a rollup centric roadmap, and it's all revolving around these layer twos, not the layer one. So Ethereum's old approach was to do execution sharding. However, later down the line, we realized that data sharding was going to be best. And this is because data sharding is designed to help these rollups. All of these layer twos that are built on top of Ethereum will be assisted by data sharding. They have more space to post their proofs to and this will overall help Ethereum to scale much, much greater than it could scale with execution sharding. Some other chains like Polkadot essentially do execution sharding. However, in my opinion, this execution sharding is not going to work long term as it simply won't be able to scale that much. The real way to properly scale is to use rollups, it's a much more secure way to scale and it's a lot simpler. If we do execution sharding and one of the shards fails, well then that can affect the security of the entire network. Whereas if a rollup fails that's using one of the data shards, well that doesn't actually matter. The rollup can fail and the network can go on and the better rollups can continue to exist. Now this chart puts it very very well and it looks a little bit confusing at first but if we break it down it's not too difficult to understand. So as we look at this chart we're going to forget about Validiums, Sidechains and Volitions. I'm going to do a separate video on Validiums and Volitions as I think they are really great and I have done videos on Sidechains in the past. So we're specifically going to focus on the tabs that say Execution Layer, Consensus Layer, Data Shards and then Rollups on top of those. Essentially, the Execution Layer is where all of the transactions are finalized 
and executed. Now, the consensus layer is where we come to consensus on what chain to use. This is what happens with proof of stake, and this is what happens with staking. The data shards, as we have already discussed, are designed to increase the space for rollups to post their proofs and increase the data availability space. Now, as we can see, we have rollups on top of this. Rollups are the layer two. So essentially what rollups will do is they will compute all of the transactions off chain and they will post a proof to the execution layer. Now, the rollups have posted this proof to the execution layer, however, there's a little bit more to do. The rollups also have a bunch of cool data. This cool data is all compressed down. However, essentially, the cool data has a few basic things on it, like user balances and a few other stuff. Now, the rollups also need to figure out where to post this cool data. As a direct result, the rollups need to post the cool data to the main chain. However, with data shards, this opens up heaps and heaps of room for the rollups to post the cool data. As a direct result, the rollups can post part of their data to the data shards, and then they can finalize all of this data on the execution layer. Therefore, this helps bring up the scalability of rollups significantly and really helps out the chain. So this is a very good development and it's very economically scalable. So there's two different approaches to sharding. There's monolithic sharding and modular sharding. Of course, we're doing modular sharding. And as you can see on the screen here, there's a bit of a table about which one's better, which was put together by Polynya. And you can have a read through this if you want. Now, chains need to do two different things. They need to be technically sustainable and economically sustainable. In my opinion, rollups plus data shards are the only way to be both technically sustainable and economically sustainable. As a direct result, a lot of these other layer ones like Solana and Cardano will either need to become a rollup on top of Ethereum or their chains will not exist in the next 10 years. So the first thing that we're going to focus on is techni technical sustainability. So what is technical sustainability? Essentially, it, it requires three things according to Polynya. It requires individuals to keep up with the chain and have all of the nodes in sync. It also requires individuals to be able to sync from Genesis in a reasonable amount of time. This means syncing all of the transaction data, all of the data on the entire chain in a pretty reasonable amount of time. And it requires avoiding state bloat getting out of hand. This essentially means all all of the past data on the chain can clog up the chain and we need that not to clog up the chain too much and not to get out of hand too much. Essentially, Ethereum retains all of these three different things. Right now, Ethereum can do all of it. However, Ethereum doesn't do enough transactions per second and it costs too much to use Ethereum. As a direct result, a sharded blockchain can retain all of these free and it can do more and more transactions per second, which is fundamental and is crucial. Essentially, if we look at centralized solutions, centralized solutions need to start compromising technical sustainability. As we can see, with a centralized solution, you don't need everyone to keep up with the chain. All you need is a small amount of people running validators. If we look at something like the Binance Smart Chain, there's 21 people who are running validators for the Binance Smart Chain. This means only 21 people can keep up with the chain. On the other hand, if we look at Ethereum, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of individuals who are running validators on the Ethereum network and hundreds of thousands of people who are keeping up with the chain, which is much more technically sustainable. Of course, this also means Ethereum is decentralized and the Binance Smart Chain is not. However, we're specifically talking about scalability and sustainability in this video. Moreover, in centralized solutions, it's completely impossible to sync the chain from Genesis and individuals just use snapshots and shortcuts to do this, which compromises security and it compromises the chain's sustainability. So centralized solutions really aren't too good at this. And since centralized solutions aren't that technically sustainable, this can result in them already reaching their hard limit. Essentially, centralized solutions can hit a couple hundred transactions per second. Right now, Solana caps out at around 500 transactions 
transactions per second. And a lot of you are going to say, hey, that's a lie, Max. Solana can do 50,000 transactions per second. However, this is in fact wrong. 50,000 transactions per second is hypothetically what Solana could do. Also, Solana counts in their transactions per second consensus votes. This means when all of the validators are voting between each other, these are counted as transactions. As a direct result, this significantly buffers up the transactions and it makes the network look a lot faster than it actually is. We can see that a lot of these bigger networks already can't do this. They can only hit a couple hundred transactions per second and their fees need to push up as a result. This isn't technically sustainable and this isn't what Ethereum is going for. As a direct result, Ethereum is going for ZK rollups. Now, ZK rollups are essentially zero knowledge rollups. I'm not going to explain what the zero knowledge part means in this video. However, you can just think of these as the most efficient form of rollups. So, as we already know, rollups take some of the computation off chain and then they settle everything on the main chain. This makes them very, very scalable, just like the centralized layer ones. However, rollups are also decentralized and secure because everything is settled on the main chain. Now, rollups are also technically sustainable. Let's recall a couple of points from technical sustainability. We need validators to be able to keep up with the chain. Now, a rollup doesn't have its own consensus mechanism. Essentially, a rollup inherits Ethereum's consensus mechanism. It totally relies on the layer one and it uses Ethereum's consensus. As a direct result, if there's hundreds of thousands of nodes around the world running the Ethereum layer one, these nodes are also securing the rollup. This means that every individual is able to keep up with the rollup and this doesn't have the same trade-offs that a centralized layer one takes. Also, this does everything that Ethereum can currently do. This means individuals can sync the blockchain from Genesis and state blokes should not get out of hand when we're using this. As a direct result, zero knowledge rollups are actually technically sustainable, whereas centralized layer ones are not technically sustainable. Moreover, you don't just need one rollup. You can have hundreds and hundreds of zero knowledge rollups running on top of Ethereum. And when you put all of these together and you take into the account the amount of data availability Ethereum will have with data sharding, you can actually get to speculatively up to 15 million transactions per second by the end of the decade. Now, Polynya has clearly done the math on this. I don't know if this is 100% accurate. However, I do believe him here. I do believe that we can get up to this amount of transactions per second, and this will be highly possible. As a direct result, chains that are relying on their first layer and only on the base layer will not be able to do this, whereas zero knowledge rollups will, and they're actually a lot more scalable than a lot of these other chains. The next thing that a chain needs to do is it needs to be economically sustainable. So let's get into exactly what this means. And Polynya says this one is fairly straightforward. A network needs to collect more transaction fees than inflation handed out to value validators and delegators. So this is base, pretty basic and pretty simple. Essentially, when people are validating the network, they're rewarded with the coin for doing so. So if you're a validator on the Solana network, well, you get given Solana. This means that Solana is inflating their supply every single year to hand out rewards to validators. Ethereum also does this. However, you need more revenue in transaction fees than inflation for the token to actually be sustainable and for the token to last long term. Now, centralized layer ones cost way more to maintain than revenues collected. Let's take Polygon and Solana as an example. We'll start with Polygon. The Polygon proof of stake chain is collecting roughly $50,000 in transaction fees every single day or $18 million in transaction fees annually. Meanwhile, Polygon is distributing over $400 million in inflationary rewards every single year. 
This means Polygon is operating at a 95% net loss. Solana is doing a very, very similar thing to Polygon, where they're operating at a huge net loss to keep the network running and keep it going. Now, there looks like there's no sign of this slowing down. This looks like it's going to continue all the way up to the end of the decade and beyond, which isn't very good for a lot of these centralized layer ones. So, this leads to two options. In the end, the network needs to continue centralizing. It needs to become even more centralized until you just get an Amazon Web Services and not even a blockchain. Or the network needs to raise the fees. The network needs to actually bring up the fees higher to make sure it's economically sustainable. Of course, we know that things like Solana want to keep the lowest fees possible as it's their only value proposition over Ethereum. However, we've already seen that chains like Polygon and chains like Binance Smart Chain are increasing their fees and they'll probably continue to do this. So, we can conclude that these centralized layer ones are not economically sustainable. However, we're going to get into how Ethereum with rollups is economically sustainable. So, let's get up to the rollup scenario. On the rollup side, it costs a tiny, tiny fraction to maintain, with very few nodes required to be live at any given time. Now, the reason for this is because the rollup is relying on Ethereum's consensus. The rollup isn't paying for its own validator set. The rollup isn't paying people to validate its network because the rollup is relying on Ethereum's network. As a direct result, the rollup doesn't need to take on all of the costs of the inflationary rewards over time, and it means it is economically sustainable. This means that Ethereum will continue to get millions of dollars in transaction fees as it will have all of these rollups submitting proofs to Ethereum. As a direct result, Ethereum will be able to afford to pay all of the validators for their work and this will mean that Ethereum is an economically sustainable network. We also know that Ethereum is even going to become deflationary and this is only possible, made possible by Ethereum's fee structure and the fact that its fee structure is significantly better better than any other centralized layer one. Therefore, Ethereum is economically efficient and technically efficient, unlike every other centralized layer one, and this will result in all of these layer ones needing to migrate to Ethereum and turn into a zero knowledge rollup on top of Ethereum if they want to survive. You may think this seems completely outlandish, however Solana's CEO already suggested this. He already suggested that they should use Ethereum for, decentralized, or for decentralization and security, and I agree with this. If they do this, Solana is going to be way, way better Solana will get a lot more use, a lot more adoption, and Solana will become decentralized, technologically sustainable, and economically sustainable. So, Polonia decides to sum everything up here. He says, the blockchain industry does not yet possess the technology to achieve global scalability. Now, we do believe that rollups and data sharding is the only way to actually get here. Polinia then says some projects are offering very low fees, effectively subsidized by speculation on the token. So the only reason that Solana is holding up is because people are speculating on the sole token. Of course, this works in the short term, however, it doesn't work in the long term. And we're looking at a system that can become the entire global system, and I do believe that can be Ethereum. He says that they are a great option for users who are looking for cheap fees. However, you do need to recognize that this is not a sustainable model, and it's not decentralized, and it's not secure. And he even then goes to say that even these projects will be forced to increase their fees over time, or become a zero-knowledge rollup on Ethereum. Therefore, Polinia concludes that rollups and data shards are the only way to scale to millions of transactions per second. So this essentially brings us to the end of the video. This is Ethereum's scaling model, and this is why it's a lot more efficient than all of the other scaling models. Now, I would be surprised if anybody made it to the end of the video, because it was a very technically dense video, and I really doubt that anyone's made it here. If you did make it to the end of the video, please comment below. I would like to see if anyone's made it. It would be very interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching the video.